Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Today my topic is about Guillain-Barre syndrome, also known as acute inflammatory demyelinating polyreticuloneuropathy. It is an autoimmune disease and it is an acute polyneuropathy. Why we call it acute polyneuropathy? Because it occurs suddenly and within the passage of months or days it subsides. So it involves the peripheral nerves, not the main central nervous system brain or spinal cord but it involves the peripheral nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system it mainly involves the nerve roots and the peripheral nerves which goes towards the limbs so what is the pathogenesis of this disease it's most commonly occur due to an infection and why we call it an autoimmune disease because whenever there is an infection occur into the body like campylobacter jejuni like epstein-barr virus like cytomegalovirus so there is a molecular mimicry of these antigen with the neuron antigen so some proteins which are present within the neurons may mimic with the Campylobacter jejuni antigen, epstein barr virus antigen or cytomegalovirus antigen. So our body will release the antibodies from T cells and B cells and these antibodies will cross react with the neuronal antigen. So as you know that the most common structure of a neuron is that there is a axon in between the neurons. So the it is like an electric wire which is having a central core which is known as the axon and surrounding the axon there is myelin sheath which play an important role in passage of the electric current from one neuron to another neuron with a high speed high velocity. So whenever there is an antibodies are formed against the Campylobacter jejuni they cross react with the axon or they may be cross react with the myelin sheath. So result into the damage of the myelin sheath, damage of myelin sheath will result into the demyelination of the neurons and whenever there is a demyelination of the neurons so the electrical signals which come from the one neurons to another neurons and within the neurons they jump like this and whenever there is a damage of the myelin sheath occurs so they do not jump and the velocity will become slow of the electric current and result into the weakness of the limbs. The clinical features of guillain barre syndrome is the special pattern in which the paralysis occur or the weakness occur. So there is an ascending paralysis which initiate from the legs and come towards the arms and the paralysis will occur in a symmetrical pattern means that both legs or both arms will, will be involved. There is a loss of deep tendon reflex as you know that it is a lower motor neuron legend because the peripheral nerves are involved. So there is a loss of deep tendon reflex or slow deep tendon reflex. There will be a facial or bulbar weakness because some cranial nerves which are motor in nature are also involved in this disease. And there is a respiratory weakness also occur and it is a life threatening condition if there is a respiratory weakness occur because the patient can't breathe well and we have to shift the patient to the ICU for the ventilator support. Also there can be an autoimmune dysfunction which means that there is an orthostatic hypotension, there will be a decrease in the motility in the GIT or we, uh, the patient can lose its bladder control also. There can be difficulty in eye movement because it is also a motor nerves which controlling the eye movements and there is difficulty in swallowing or why there is a pricking or needles pin needles like sensation which is also called as paresthesia because some variant of the guillain barre syndrome also involves the sensory nerves which result into the pin needle like sensation or the insect crawling inside the skin and there can be a painful condition also in the guillain barre syndrome so uh, what are the variant of the or we can say that what are the types of the guillain barre syndrome the most common type is aidp which means that autoimmune demyelinating autoimmune inflammatory demyelinating polyreticuloneuropathy it is the most common type of guillain barre syndrome the other type 
is aman which is acute motor axonal neuropathy and amsan in which there is the motor neuron and the sensory neurons are also involved and it is called as acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy or there will be a miller fisher syndrome what is a miller fisher syndrome it is an also a variant of the it is also a variant of the guillain-barre syndrome in which there is the involvement of the eye which is result in the ophthalmoplegia there can be a reflexia there can be ataxia the patient will told that he can't walk now how to diagnose a patient with Guillain-Barre syndrome there are no any specific investigation for the Guillain-Barre syndrome we will the physician will diagnose a patient according to the history given by the patient the patient will give the history that there is a recent onset within days to four weeks of symmetrical weakness okay and there is an abnormal sensation like pain like pringling sensation like uh, pin prick sensation like insect crawling inside the skin so these are the uh, history which the patient give to the doctor on, uh, on examination the patient uh, the doctor will see that there are the absent or diminished tendon reflexes and the lumbar puncture will show that there are elevated protein within the cerebrospinal fluid also there will be abnormal nerve conduction velocity in the nerve conduction study and sometime a patient will give that there is a history of recent diarrhea or viral infection the treatment of the Guillain-Barre syndrome is a plasma pheresis and the IV immunoglobulin which will given within the 14 days of the onset of a disease so what does the plasma pheresis and IV immunoglobulin do that they remove the antibodies which are playing an important role in damaging the neurons and the myelin sheath and the axon so when these antibodies will remove from the plasma by the plasma pheresis or IVIG so these antibodies load will low and the neurons will regenerate themselves and result into the good prognosis of a disease in 80% of the patient the prognosis is good and sometime there is a respiratory weakness occur which is an emergency condition and this need ventilator support ICU endotracheal intubation for the mechanical ventilation so also we will do the VTE prophylaxis what does it mean is that venous thromboembolism prophylaxis because these disease can sus can increase the risk of the venous thromboembolism which lead to the pulmonary embolism and it is the most common cause of death in Gaulin Berry syndrome VTE prophylaxis so we will give the low molecular weight heparin to those patient which come with the Gaulin Berry syndrome so this is all about the Gaulin Berry syndrome thank you very much